Have you ever wondered how the Great Wall of China, a structure so vast it can be seen from space, came to be? This immense fortification, with a history as rich and expansive as its physical length, has stood as a silent sentinel for centuries, guarding the historical northern borders of ancient Chinese states and imperial China. In the beginning, wall building was a practice well known to the Chinese as early as the 8th to 5th centuries BC, during the spring and autumn period. Various states including Qin, Wei, Zhao, Qi, Han, Yan, and Zhongshan all constructed extensive fortifications to defend their borders. These early walls, built to withstand the attack of small arms such as swords and spears, were made mostly of stone or by stamping earth and gravel between board frames. The formation of what we now know as the Great Wall began with King Jing of Qin, who, after unifying China as the first emperor in 221 BC, ordered the destruction of the sections of the walls that divided his newly unified empire. This, however, did not signify the end of wall construction. On the contrary, the emperor ordered the building of new walls to connect the remaining fortifications along the empire's northern frontier to guard against the Xiongnu people from the north. This gave birth to the principle of build and move on, implying that the Chinese were not erecting a permanently fixed border. The construction of the wall was a monumental task, requiring a vast quantity of materials. Builders sought to use local resources wherever possible. Stones from the mountains were used over mountain ranges, while rammed earth was used for construction in the plains. The exact length and course of the Qin walls remain a mystery, as no historical records have survived. Most of the ancient walls have eroded away over the centuries, and very few sections remain today. The human cost of this colossal construction project is also unknown, but some authors estimate that hundreds of thousands of workers lost their lives in the process. Over the centuries, many successive dynasties repaired, rebuilt or expanded sections of the Great Wall at great cost to defend themselves against northern invaders. The Han, northern dynasties, and the Sui all invested heavily in the wall. However, the Tang and Song dynasties did not undertake any significant effort in the region. Dynasties founded by non-Han ethnic groups also built their border walls. The Xianbei ruled Northern Wei, the Khitan ruled Liao, Jurchen led Jin, and the Tangut established Western Jia. Beyond its role as a defense mechanism, the Great Wall served other purposes. It allowed for border controls, imposed duties on goods transported along the Silk Road, regulated trade, and controlled immigration and emigration. Furthermore, the defensive characteristics of the Great Wall were enhanced by the construction of watchtowers, troop barracks, garrison stations, signaling capabilities through smoke or fire, and the fact that the path of the Great Wall also served as a transportation corridor. So, there you have it. The Great Wall of China, a marvel of human ingenuity and perseverance, is not just a wall. It's a testament to a nation's history, a symbol of its resilience, and a monument to the countless lives that were spent in its creation. It is a story of a nation's desire to protect, to fortify, and to endure. It is, in essence, the story of China itself.